Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to be here with you guys this Sunday morning, worshiping the Lord. Amen. 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 Our call to worship is from the holy writings that say in Ephesians 5.14, Wake up, you who are sleeping. Anybody sleeping out there? Rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I love that verse. Wake up, you who are sleeping. Sometimes I feel sleepy in the Lord. Sometimes I feel like I don't know if I'm as close to him as I could be or that I know I should be. Uh, and it says, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So he'll give us the light, but we have to ask for it. Now, we're going to do a couple of songs here that are, all three of them are prayer songs. They are all different kinds of songs. Some hymns are about, um, about God, how great is our Lord, and that kind of a thing. Other, other hymns that we sing uh, are encouraging to us. We're talking to each other. Crown him with many crowns, the king upon his throne. We're, we are to crown Jesus as the king of our lives, right? And then encourages each other. Uh, but then some songs are, are vertical, talking to God. Occasionally you get a song, uh, it's more rare, but you, get a, you do have songs where God's talking to us. It's his voice uh, speaking to us. And one of ours is, my sheep know my voice and the sound of, and it goes on and on. So we're the sheep, and it's his voice that we hear. Um, so, but th these prayer songs are wonderful because they are definitely from us to the Lord. And so somewhere in these three songs will be a prayer that you can uh, relate to, I'm sure. The first one is just a closer walk with thee. I think we would all like to have a closer walk. I know I certainly would. <coughs> Here we go. So Lord, hear these prayers. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I
to make us a new vessel. Turn me into a a vessel able to be filled with him. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soul Make us new people.
Lord, we often pray to you and ask you to change things, change circumstances, change, you know, bring healing, bring wholeness. And you want us to come. And yet often when we pray, uh, it is for our benefit. And you, you want to do a change in us. So do that change in us today, we pray. All in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Change my heart. There we go. Make it ever true. Change my heart. today. Have a seat, everybody. You know, I have some special cups I want to show you today. First of all, this one came from a friend of mine. These are special because they were given to me. This one is um, the Caring Church at the Forks to the North, Standish Free Methodist Church. It says, come grow with us on North Main Street in Standish, Michigan. So that's that was given me by our our uh, pastor friend Burton Kincaid and Janita, who are ministering at the Standish FM Church. So whenever I drink tea or coffee out of this, of course, I say a prayer for them. So there's that. Then there's this one. I don't know if you can read it out there. It says, some grandpas play bingo, real grandpas ride motorcycles. <laughs> Tell Vernon he missed that one. That was, that, he would have appreciated that one, real grandpas. Right, motorcycles, some will argue with me about that, but uh, my daughter-in-law gave me that one. I thought, that was pretty cool. Now, my son gave me this one. I'm sure you can read this one. Top pop. Apparently, I'm the top pop. My son gave me this. He goes, you're the top pop. Okay. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Oh, and then there's another one. One more. This was a good, uh, this was a good teacup. Reminds me. It says, keep calm and enjoy life. Keep calm. Anybody get nervous or anxious? Occasionally, I do. So, there are a lot of cups mentioned in Scripture. I want to talk to you just real quick about the one in Psalm 23. It says, mm -hmm. it says my cup overflows. My cup overflows. He's talking about a, a real cup. His cup overflows. I think he's talking about himself. He's a cup receiving from the Lord, and it says the Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need, so he's, God is providing for him. God gives him rest, leads him to the quiet waters. It's nice to be the, by the quiet waters. He renews my life, so you get new life. He's uh, new ways to follow him. Um, even if I go through a dark valley, I'm, you know, God is with me, so his presence keeps me safe and happy, and 
Um, even his rod and staff, they bring comfort to me. And then, then, then there's a table. The Lord's feeding me with good things. Even in the presence of my enemies, anoints my head with oil, and then he says, my cup overflows. Wow. So think of yourselves as a cup. Go like this real quick. Go like, go like that. I got a cup. Uh, I don't want to. Nobody wanted to do it with me. Jesse, good job. So it's kind of like you're a cup. Lord, pour it down. Let the rain come on down. Fill me up with all these good things from Psalm 23. Sound good? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for making us into a vessel, making us into a cup that can receive your goodness and your blessing. Bless these today especially, we ask in Jesus' name, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can be dismissed. I think I had them through the cups, and then I kind of lost them on the Psalm 23, I suppose, but. Okay. A few family matters to share. If you notice in your program, next Sunday, our service is moving. Okay? Our service will not be held here. We will meet down at the Veterans Pavilion. Uh, for the community worship service. This is part of the Sunflower Festival. So just remember that it's the Sunday of the Sunflower Festival, and that's why we're meeting down there. Uh, 1045 would be a good time to get there, and there's a potluck afterwards. So bring a dish to pass. I forgot to wrote that in, write that in there. Bring a dish to pass. Um, and uh, I think that's everything. Oh, the three different, at least three churches are involved. I will be hosting and welcoming everybody. I'll probably do a kid's message. Dennis Squires is going to bring the sermon for the day. Nate uh, Jeffords from uh, Mayville United Methodist, he will, he will do the closing and the prayer and everything at the end. Uh, so the three of us are sharing, you know, the duties of pastoring. Um, and so I invite you to come to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. You could bring a chair. There's also, they'll have chairs there. They'll have uh, picnic tables and things to sit on as well. But if you have a certain chair you like, you might want to bring, uh, bring that. Okay. Um, so just remember that. I'll also, this week, I'll send out a reminder message. So you'll get one of those automated calls that I send out occasionally, um, reminding everybody uh, about that. Okay. Um, so tithes and offerings, we continue to... Um, invest in God's work here at Pleasant View. Continue to do that, and uh, we are uh, holding our own budget-wise. So keep keep up the good work. Um, you have two part-time pastors now. I'm part-time and semi-retired, I suppose you could call it. Um, and so, and then we're also we also have uh, Nathaniel. Nathaniel is now part-time with us. Uh, on a, in a paid position. He's also got a 40-hour-a-week job, so keep him in your prayers because uh, some, some weeks are very easy for him at work and some weeks are very hard because everything breaks and he has to fix it all. So any computers, any networks, right, any cabling, all that fun stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, let's, um, let's say a prayer for about that. And then we're going to go to Nathaniel's bringing the message today. He has a song to share and then uh, the sermon. So let's, um, let's take a moment to pray. Thank you, God, for giving us this church. Thank you for giving us of yourself. Thank you for blessing us in so many ways. Lord, I pray for uh, Nathaniel as he shares from his heart today that you would fill him with your spirit. Give him the holy unction of the spirit to preach your word. Help him, Lord, and help us to hear your voice. Uh, this is an act of worship as we listen, and we want to, Lord, be changed by you. So speak into our hearts for your children are listening. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ever since I heard this song on the radio, I've been singing it in my head, and it goes really well with the message about my cup. This is Andrew Rip, Fill My Cup. Walking to a city I cannot see 
Through the depths of the valley where the sun can reach I've been high, I've been low I've been looking for the river that could fill my soul Been walking to a city that I cannot see Fill my cup, Lord Run it over Give me love, give me joy, give me peace Fill my cup, Lord Run it over I am your child in need Lord, I need you to fill my cup standing in my way they can say what they want I don't want what they say I was born far from home but I've been thriving in the wonder of the great unknown cuz I'm drinking from a well from another place oh fill my cup Lord run it over give me love give me joy give my cup, Lord, run it over, cause I am your child in need, Lord, I need you to fill my cup. that city that I cannot see. I'll know that even this valley was a golden stream. Fill my cup, Lord, run it over. Oh, give me love, give me joy, give me peace. Fill my cup, Lord, run it over. Cause I am up with hope, fill my plans up with purpose, fill my rooms up with healing, cause Lord I need you to fill my cup, fill my days up with meaning, fill my future with vision, goodness, grace, and provision, Lord I need you. It's hard to maintain that mindset 24-7, though, that God can fill our cup, that God fills our cup with the essentials, love, joy, and peace. Psalm 16.5 says, Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessing. You hold my future. And I like the cup. It is a neat analogy. In your bulletin, you will see references to the cup that I might not cover, but it may intrigue you to go do your own research and look more into what the Bible says about the cup. So what is the cup? Bruce sort of alluded to it earlier with the kids. The cup is you. The cup is your being. My cup was created by my parents, and God placed a soul and recognized my cup by creating it in the image of his cup. Humanity created in the image of God. So God is a big cup, and we are little cups created in his image. We are the clay, and he is the potter, like we sang in the hymn earlier. And I've always loved that hymn. Mold me and make me, Lord. This is what I pray. And I might have had a little extra intrigue to it because my middle name is Clay, so it was just a connection there. But <laughs> So you see, we're given the cup of the flesh when we're born, passed down by Adam through our parents. But it is a cup full of sin and a cup full of shame. Then when accepting Christ, we receive the cup of salvation. I was going to have like a golden goblet here, so this was the cup of the flesh and this was the cup of salvation, but couldn't find one in time, so just imagine one here because I'll reference it a lot. <laughs> the cup should envelop 
the cup of salvation should envelop the cup of the flesh, refining it and turning it into something beautiful and pleasing to our creator God. My cup has always been filled with Christian music, and it is still my favorite form of worship, if you didn't notice. But at an early age, out of boredom and curiosity, I sought the things of this world to satisfy my desires. I found worldly ways to fill my cup. The people around me used drugs and alcohol as their top choice for worldly substitutes instead of God's provisions, and I sought to enjoy myself seeing that others were doing it in that way. I still carried my cup of salvation but was an only an inward part of me in my Christianity, and I would only ever speak of it if people asked, but nobody ever did. I was what you would call a fourth soiler. I had either fallen on rocky soil with no roots, or I had fallen among thorns, and faced with opposition and insecurity, I would always just shy away. I would never proclaim my faith, or when I did, it was embarrassing, and then I would shy away again. Outwardly, I filled my cup of the flesh any way possible. And then after a loss of a friend to an overdose in 2007, I dove deeper into my flesh cup and drowned out my pain in anything I could in any possible way I could. Fast forward four years, I found myself driving all the way out to Bridgeport to work in an Arby's of all places. I was miserable beyond explanation, and I finally started submitting to what I had always known to be true. I calmed my weary spirit by turning on Smile FM to fill my cup and mind with reaffirming joy and biblical truths in the lyrics of those songs. And then I would step into the storm of unhappiness and resentment. I'd get back out in the world, and I would brood about my situation, still suffering from the loss and the depression that followed me everywhere I went. Why didn't God bless me as the prophet in my mind that I thought I was? My expectations were high, and I wanted the, my portion that I was promised. But again, I was seeking a worldly portion. I wasn't seeking this portion that God described. I wanted the riches of the world. I wanted what my neighbors had, what my friends have, what, what that guy over there has. But it's not what the psalmist was talking about. That's not the portion God promises, the riches of the world. His portion is the Holy Spirit in our lives. His portion for us what we truly need, not what the world tempts us to desire. And sometimes our desires are not even evil ones. We all want a safe place to call home, food in abundance, be able to financially be stable. And trusting in the Lord will yield us what we need. But it has to be actual trust in practice, not just nice words we recite. There's a difference between knowing the path you should walk and actually walking that path. Some of us reject God's portion and provisions. And maybe that's never been the case for you here listening, but you definitely can bring someone to mind that fits that description. A family member, a friend, a neighbor, a colleague. Some of us, myself included, have grown tolerant of misery and neglecting our need to be closer and connected with our Heavenly Father. We choose the things of this world to fill our cups and satisfy us. Sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. I'm the guiltiest of this, having put drugs and alcohol in my cup for amusement. I've filled my cup with lust and stimulations of different kind. I've filled my cup with distractions of mindless and meaningless things, all in an attempt to attain peace of mind. The peace that surpasses understanding isn't obtained from the things and the ways of this world. So why do we fall into these ruts and rhythms where we seek alternate fuel sources to fill up with rather than God's portion that's allotted to us? John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. So what cup are we focused on? That's the question. The cup of salvation that overflows, like it said in the song that I sang, and it also that is a reference to Psalm 23, 5, where David spoke of a cup running over. That is the cup of salvation. And I was always interested, when you read about the cups in the Bible, there's an interesting contrast. And again, there's several examples in the bulletin. Psalm 16, 5, of course, Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessing. You hold my future. That sounds like a good cup. Then in Psalm 23, 5, my cup overflows. That sounds like a good cup. Yet in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus spoke of a cup that he would rather the Lord take from him. So it's a, there's a bad cup out there. And yet in complete surrender to God's will, Jesus chose to drink it. 
This was a cup of sorrow, of bitterness, of cursing. And having emptied it completely, Jesus filled it back up with joy, sweetness, and bitterness. Or no, joy, sweetness, and blessing. <laughs> so he, he drank all the sorrow, bitterness, and curses, filled it back up with joy, sweetness, and blessing. Let us never forget the cost at which he so filled it for us. The things that he went through so that we could receive our blessed portion. Philippians 4.19 says, My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So are we focused on his riches, which are glory and blessings too great to contain? Or are we focused on the cup of the flesh and what's in our neighbor's cup? Well, their cup's bigger and it holds more things and I want the things in their cup. God himself gave you the cup you possess, and he is also the one to fill it till it overflows. Psalm 116.13 says, I will take the cup of salvation, and I will call on the name of the Lord. It is available to all who will receive it. God's generous blessing has no limit. That's why it continues to overflow. He doesn't begin pouring and then ask you to say when. He just continues to pour until it's all over the place. But that's his blessing. It is abundant. In John 16, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. It's guaranteed by Christ. But be courageous, Jesus said. I have overcome the world. So we do our best to not focus on the sufferings that we face daily. We do our best not to focus on the cup of the flesh, but this cup of salvation, this golden goblet that Christ handed us. We focus on the cup that God has placed in our hands that overflows with goodness, mercy, grace, compassion, forgiveness. It is all our perspective. Which one do we focus on? Sometimes we're holding both of them, and it's hard to decide. Which one am I filling? Which one am I wanting? Which one do I need? This cup should just go into this cup and become one. This is now my cup of salvation. I don't focus on the flesh anymore. Where does your focus linger? What do you believe and know to be true? Again, do you know the path, and are you walking the path? I've had to change up my regiment and get back into reading the Bible daily, learning once again how to fill my own cup with all that is good. I had an interesting week at Heman's Camp. I had a lot of good conversations with people, and as I talked more and more with people, the one person gave me some insights. They said, you've got a lot of fight in you. You've got a lot of anger. That's not attributes of Christ. And I guess it would go back to the pandemic. Things were questionable. Things were misunderstood. Things were put across that I didn't believe. So I began doing my own research. I became a, like a private investigator. I started checking resources and looking for this and looking for that. But I was seeking worldly truths, filling my cup of flesh with knowledge and intellect and understanding. But there was nothing going into my cup of salvation. It was like I would, I'd offer my cup of salvation to God. I'd read like a daily scripture or something. But it was never enough to feed my soul. I was so empty. And she looked right at me and said, I, I could see that. I hear it in your tone of voice. I know where you're at and I know where you want to be. And those are two different places. So I had to, she said, you need to be, instead of seeking these worldly truths and these things that you think you want to know, Seek Jesus, the one who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Live your life through his truth rather than living your life through these worldly truths and understandings. That's why my favorite scripture is Proverbs 3, 5. Lean not on your own understanding. And I'd been doing that for years to the point where I was limping along trying to maintain, but it was not sustainable. This cup was overflowing, but the cup of my salvation where I should have been happy and joyous, there's nothing in it. I mean, I was putting something in it. The most I'd get out of it was preparing for a message here. But as, as far as doing personal, intimate fellowship with my creator, it was very much lacking. So I had to realign my focus. I really had to get back to a regiment of reading this because this is the living word of God. This will sustain you. Amen. And my wife and I had a conversation. It's so hard sometimes to sit down and read. Some of us don't have the attention span to read. That's why you got to get it, get the books on tape or Bible app will read it to you sometimes. And I've done that a lot because I can't focus sometimes. But sometimes I've had to make myself. I have to read out loud until I get it in there, until I can get into my head and start reading it and 
as it feeds me, as it fills me up, I become closer to it. It becomes an easier thing, but honestly, we have to try hard nowadays because our attention spans are just nothing left. So learn once again how to fill your own cup, as I have been doing. Mainly God's love through his son that chose to go to the cross on my behalf and on yours. Also remember when faced with evil people and enemies that Jesus suffered and died for their salvation as well. That one's a hard one for me to stomach. I want my enemies to be condemned. I want them to be judged by God. But Jesus says, I hung there and thought of them. You should seek their salvation. You shouldn't be seeking their condemnation. The hardest thing has been praying for my enemies. But with the right focus and mindset, I'm once again fixing my eyes on eternity, his kingdom, and being the best worker in the field I can be without resentment. Because you can do the right thing for the wrong reasons, and then you can get salty against God. Now I'm doing your thing, but you're not blessing me the way I want, but I'm focusing on the cup of the flesh. That's never going to be filled, and even if it is, it's not going to be satisfactory. It's never going to be enough. I was reminded also at Hemans that we aren't to be joining camps or sides. I was so focused on my political stance and my understanding of these people and these policies and the things that are being allowed to occur in our country. But truly, we shouldn't be focused on what camp we're on, what camp we're in, or who we side with. We should be kingdom focused. We should be focused on bringing people in, bringing them in, and letting them be under the shadow of God's wings. Allow them to be part of this flock. Forgive and love and accept them like we're supposed to. We accomplish our righteous goals by relying on him who gave it all for our strength and to fill our cup. Our flesh desperately clings to this life and its comforts when God says, I will sustain you and I will provide for you wherever you go. In the book of Matthew, a scribe approaches Jesus and says, I will follow you anywhere. And Jesus told him, foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. That means following me will be tough, tougher than the comforts of this world. If that's what you're seeking, you might not want to follow me because I don't even have a place to sleep tonight. This reminds us to seek not the comforts of this world. Don't seek the wide path that leads to destruction. Jesus guaranteed that we would face hard times, but then he added, fear not, I have overcome this world. We are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for us. So it's not about what we desire or crave, but about surrendering to his will and purpose. And all those things that we desire will be given on top of that. But it comes through submission to our God. Not as the world sees fit, but as God knows what we need and when we need it. His timing is perfect and his will is absolute. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Treasures on earth in our fleshly cup. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where neither thief break in or steal. And where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your cup needs to be overflowing in that cup of salvation that Christ handed to you. That is where your blessing and your portion lies. Let your treasure reside within the cup of salvation, not the cup of the flesh. The cup that Christ fills continuously. So what can you do with this and how do we help those who are struggling? First, are these just words you've memorized, or have you written them on your heart? Do you study them? Do you maintain that? Is it just something that you can reference that you remember from a long time ago, or are you daily putting this back in? I'm guilty of memorization without implementation. I've known a lot of the word, but have I been implementing it? Have I been using it? Have I been walking in it? Have I been living it out? Not all the time. I can admit that. In your subconscious mind, do you dwell in God's goodness or in your burdens? And it's hard not to focus on our burdens, but again, it's, it's a shift of the mind. Ask yourself the question, if God doesn't give me what I want, but always gives me what I need, is that enough for me? If God doesn't give me what I want, but always gives me what I need, is that enough? And I was reminded, Switchfoot has a song called Let That Be Enough. And the chorus is, 
Let me know that you hear me, Lord. Let me know your touch. Let me know that you love me. Let that be enough. I need to allow God's portion for me to be enough to satisfy. Let the cup that he's given me and the contents he pours sustain me forever instead of my flesh cup that I'm so easily drawn to. Let that be enough. Lord, help me to stop chasing after the wind and learn to chase after you. And long for what you have in store for my life, in you and through you. Spiritual warfare is a battle for our minds. What do we focus on and what fills our cup? Ask yourself, does my heart desire to be filled by God? Does my love tank receive fuel from the one who designed it? Or am I seeking alternate fuel sources that will never keep the engine running? Your flesh and sin nature is attempting to fill the cup that God gave you only incorrectly. There's a fuel station on every corner nowadays. So many wrong ways to fill up our cups. You need to seek your fuel here in the right place with the right refinement. Within your own flesh, the sin nature deems you a failure. You are an empty cup as far as the world concerns. But as a child of God, redeemed by grace, our focus is on the cup of salvation that produces righteousness within us. That cup is constantly overflowing. The cup of salvation, the cup that Christ freely suffered on the cross, died and was resurrected so that he could hand you this perfect cup and say, receive my portion here, not there. Does your cup overflow with the abundance of God's goodness? The overflowing of your cup should benefit those around you. It is a good thing. It's, it's interesting that God gives you all of this, but then he says, I want you to take more from me. I'm an unlimited resource. You don't have to be, you don't have to feel like you're greedy by taking more from me. Take as much as you want and continue to take it until you're taking it and influencing the people around you or close by. To seek to have a cup is not for selfish reasons. Your overflowing cup should shine light into the dark places in this world, and there are a lot of dark places in this world. The blessing that overflows from your cup can be used for God's glory in the lives around you. Keep trying to lead those stubborn horses to the well that never runs dry. Because there are a lot of people that we try to teach the right things, but and it's like, here's the living water, here's the cup of salvation, drink from this, you'll enjoy it. And they say, no, I got this one right here. I'm used to it, I've been drinking out of it for a long time. Yours doesn't make any sense. Let go and let God give up everything and he'll provide everything. How does that work by a worldly standard? It doesn't actually work if you look at it on a scale of comparison within the world. But keep trying to lead those stubborn horses. Keep trying to get them to the well, the well of living water. Even if they refuse to drink, your efforts are not in vain. And keep praying that their hearts would be softened, that God would speak to them, that the Spirit of God would prepare them before you arrive, that they would receive these things that we know are true. Continue to pray for their intervention, even if it's not by your hand. We also talked a lot about prodigals at Heman's camp, and it just, sometimes we feel like there's nothing we can do, and we put all this effort in, and we've left tracks laying around, and we've sent them scriptures, and we've sent them really interesting songs with really good meanings, and they just don't take it. But don't give up. Don't stop giving them. Don't stop bringing them up here and laying them on the altar and saying, Lord, they're yours. Work in them the way you will. Continue now or begin to read this living word that will fill the cup of your eternal soul and store up treasures in heaven where they mean the most. As I was preparing for this, I came across Psalm 73. And it's interesting that it, it really, it seems to capture at least my sentiment of the world today and what's going on around us. It says, God is indeed good to Israel, to the pure in heart. But as for me, my feet almost slipped, my steps nearly went astray. For I envied the arrogant, I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have an easy time until they die, and their bodies are well fed. They are not in trouble like others. 
they are not afflicted like most people. Therefore, pride is their necklace, and violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge out from fatness. Their imaginations of their hearts run wild. They mock and they speak maliciously. They arrogantly threaten oppression. They set their mouths against heaven, and their tongues strut across the earth. Therefore, his people turn to them and drink in their overflowing words. The wicked say, how can God know? Does the Most High know everything? Look at them, the wicked. They are always at ease, and they increase their wealth. Did I purify my heart and wash my hands in innocence for nothing? For I am afflicted all day long and punished every morning. If I had decided to say these things aloud, I would have betrayed your people. When I tried to understand all this, it seemed hopeless until I entered God's sanctuary. Then I understood their destiny. Indeed, you put them in slippery places. You make them fall into ruin. How suddenly they become a desolation. They come to an end, swept away by terrors, like one waking from a dream. Lord, when arising, you will despise their image. When I became embittered and my innermost being was wounded, I was stupid and didn't understand. I was an unthinking animal toward you, yet I am always with you. You hold my right hand, the hand of righteousness. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take up in glory. Who do I have in heaven but you? And I desire nothing on earth but you. Fill my cup. My flesh and my heart may fail. My God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. He is our portion. Even when all this wicked is going on and they seem to be prospering, God is our portion in the end. He's everything we need. Those far from you will certainly perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, God's presence is in my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, so I can tell about all you do. Lord God, I thank you for your scriptures. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your will, for your son. I thank you for our understanding of who you are in our lives and what we are to do with this. Continue to be our portion, Lord God. Continue to fill our cups with your righteousness, your goodness, your salvation. Keep us focused and fixated on your kingdom, on your, on your love, on your mercy. Help us to extend it to these people that feel undeserving, Lord God, but break our hearts for the things that break yours, Lord Jesus. Let us know your love that is unconditional and overflowing. Help us to fill our cups through your living water. Help us to fill the cups of those around us, Lord God. Help us to reach the lost. Help us to reach those who are hurting. Comfort those who are afflicted. Be with those who are wandering out there, Lord God. They know you, but they need to come back in. They need to know you more intimately, more personally. Continue to bless our days. Bless us with opportunities. Continue to give us our privileges, our freedom. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you are in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Take out your hymnal real quick as Peggy comes. You know this one, I imagine. You probably won't need to uh, even look at the words, but uh, we're going to turn to th number 335. Once, you once you've got it, uh, give me your eyes back up here, and we'll go from there. 335. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And as she's playing that, I want to share one thing about this cup. I love the fact that the salvation cup is kind of imaginary. Like we have to remind ourselves it's there even if we can't personally see it. But this thing, if this is the, the cup of the world, right, the flesh, it's always there. We can't get our eyes off of it. That always attracts to it. And what we need to do as we sing this song is we need to take this and dump it out. And we need to keep it upside down. Stay. We need to keep that thing dumped out 
with the things of the flesh. And uh, we need to turn our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. The things that were in here, they didn't do anything for our faith, did they? No. All right, let's sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's stand together. Just look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. Lead him in the light of his glory and grace. One more time. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The light of his presence, his glory is his presence, and we want to spend time in his presence. Thank you for that good word, Pastor Nathaniel. The Lord's given us a wonderful preacher pastor, hasn't he? Yes, yes. And I just say that because you need to know that we believe in you. We believe that Jesus has his hand on you, that he has called you, and that he has given you a path to walk that's going to be a struggle. You heard it. You heard him, what he shared from his heart today, that that, that is very typical for somebody who is on the path to being the preacher, the pastor, the minister that God wants him to be. That's very, yeah, and it's a reminder for us to pray, isn't it? We're going to do some prayer requests. If you have, I want to have a prayer time real quick to pray for the things that you wrote down. Um, Dean Bedell is one who has come to faith in Christ. He's in Florida, a good friend of, uh, of uh, the Hans, the Gwyns, and people, uh, that know him from this area. And so uh, he's come to faith in Christ, but he is in the ICU. He has cancer so bad it's gone into his heart, and now his heart's acting up. So when you think of Dean, pray for Dean Bedell. Okay, and then I'm sure there are other things. Oh, and um, Janet, after... After I pray for all these things, we're going to pray for Janet Dodds. She asked to be anointed. You still want to be anointed? Okay, so we're going to, at the end of this, we're going to gather around Janet and anoint her for healing from this chronic infection that she has. Okay? Let's pray. Lord, we do turn our eyes upon you. We do thank you, Lord. We thank you for one who is in the hospital now, Dean, and he uh, most recently did turn his eyes upon you. He said, It's done. I believe he, Lord, is yours. He's your child, and he is on his way to being in your presence. Guide him. Help him, Lord. May your will be done. And may the rest of his family see his faith. Even in these last hours, it appears, of his life, may the family have uh, new faith, maybe renewed faith, but new faith in you uh, because of his faith. Uh, help him to show the peace of Christ. Um, and Lord, we pray for Sandy, uh, who has cancer. They start treatment soon. We pray that the, all the doctors will get on the same page for Sandy. We pray, Lord, for her to be healed. Uh, may this treatment work out. We, Lord, we prayed for so many who have come to healing, and others have found the healing of coming into your presence. But we trust you, Lord. And we pray for Catherine's friend Judy having a difficult time getting over pneumonia. Uh, Lord, you know Judy. She's 80 years old. She needs your touch. She needs your healing. Clear her lungs, we pray. And Cheryl says there's a young man, Sean, and he is having emotional mental issues and turmoil, and he needs prayer. So, Lord, center him, help him to turn his eyes upon you 
so that whatever these mental emotional issues uh, that they would that they would just fade away as he looks to you um, bring your people around him to do that Lord uh, and Bev O'Neill uh, Mark Bresnahan having surgery first we pray for Bev who needs your touch we miss Bev but we pray for her Lord that you would give her clarity of mind and be with Mike as he cares for her also, there's a man by the name of Mark Bresnahan who has a brain tumor, and he needs salvation, Lord. He's probably fretting and in terrible pain with this brain tumor, but what he really needs is you. He needs a heart transplant, not a brain transplant. Give him a heart. Give him a new heart. Uh, take his heart of stone and give him a heart of flesh, we pray, in the name of Jesus. And then we also lift up um, Wanda uh, that we've been praying, who's 94, and she has cancerous mass on her tongue. Lord, uh, she will soon start radiation. It's going to be increase her pain, but Lord, you can take that pain, and you can help her mind to just filter it out. You have done that for me in the last few days, as I've got multiple bug bites, and they could be very maddening, but they're not, because you've helped me to filter it out. I just, I just act as if they're not there. Thank you for that, Lord. And Father God, we thank you for um, this day and for the way that you love us. You have poured your love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, and we are grateful. It's in your name we pray, amen. Okay, now let's gather around Janet, and we'll anoint her. Would you do the anointing, and I'll do the pray part. So Jan has been struggling with this infection that just will not stop, but we will stop it in the name of Jesus. Amen? All right? Now we won't stop it. Jesus will stop it because he is your, the Lord is your father. Yes. Lord, thank you for your daughter, Janet. Thank you, Lord, that she loves you. I thank you, Lord, uh, that she has been with this church uh, so long. She's loved you, Lord. You know what's going on with this infection. Lord, we're asking again that you would drive it out of her body. Lord, we don't know what's causing it, but you do. Make her whole. Help her, Lord, uh, to not you know, be so fatigued by this and help her not to be sh so shaky from this infection, Lord. Give her body the peace and healing uh, that you have for her. We're praying all this in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus, make her whole, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you. All righty then. Whoops, what did I do with the clicker? Oh, here it is. Here is the benediction, the words from Jesus. So let's stand and then we'll be dismissed. And you just sat down, but stand back up again. <laughs> Jesus gives you this blessing today. He says, peace I leave you with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So take God's peace with you today and every day. God bless you. Amen.